Hey guys, Nico Parisi here with Millionaire Mindset. Today we are going to uh, talk about our weekly market update. So we're going to go through the previous week. This is going to be just like the other ones. We're going to talk about the economic calendar. We're going to talk about some top headlines in the week. And then we're going to do a wrap up of how the markets did uh, for the previous week. So to get started, we'll pull up the economic calendar. And it was actually a really, really busy week. Um, the font is a little small here because we had a lot to pack. So again, I'm going to read over these and then we're going to pull up the other website that has the context behind these uh, numbers here. So last Monday, we had two different surveys that came out, the Chicago Fed National Activity Index and the Dallas Fed Manufacturing Index. So all this is is regional. So Chicago is a Chicago region, Dallas, Dallas region, right? This is telling us in Chicago, just general activity, economic activity, what's going on. And then we have in Dallas, uh, manufacturing wise, how that's looking. So for Chicago, we had a slightly negative print. Previously, we had a slightly positive print. Um, this summer doesn't really get much below or above one. You guys can see here that this typically doesn't go too much above or below one. You can see back um, had a big, big dip here in incline, but what are we seeing here? We're just seeing very minute growth or decline. So nothing really too concerning. We can go back a little bit. It's hard to see because of COVID kind of whacked out the scale, but we're kind of just floating around. So we don't really expect much positive here. I mean, any positive is a good thing. So we didn't really see that last month, but nothing that I would be too worried about. The next one we have is the Dallas uh, survey regarding manufacturing. And you can see we were actually doing quite well. Looks like from what we're seeing, this is still hindsight 2020, but from what we're seeing, that economy peaked in late spring, early summer, so April, May, and we've kind of been in a decline ever since. Um, you can see we had a little slight rebound, so that's good in October, um, but you can see we were at 37 and then we were down to four, a little bump up, so that's encouraging. We'll go to a five-year mark here. You can see where we had the peaks in 2018 and then we were going down. We had COVID hit, we had the rebound, but it looks like we're coming back down. So this was an encouraging print. Um, doesn't really mean much. We're going to see what it comes in the next few weeks, but encouraging nonetheless. The next one we're going to look at, uh, we have new home sales, how they did from the previous month and how they were year over year. So we have a annualized rate of 800,000 and that was from the previous uh, 702. And then we had a month over month of 14%. So we had a big gain in new homes being sold. Um, we also had here the Richmond uh, Manufacturing and Services Index for October. We had a 12 for manufacturing from the previous negative three. So that was a good sign. And then again, we have services at nine from the previous three. So you can see from that other index, right? It looks like October, we have a little bit of a rebound. We'll see if that lasts, but that is good news. So we're gonna check the context for each of these. This is the annualized rate for those uh, for the new home sales. You can see again, we kind of peaked towards the end of last year and we have been in a steady decline since, but we've got a little bit of a bump. Let's go back a few years. We can kind of see the trend here. Uh, steady increase and COVID actually had a large jump, right? A lot of this was a lot of these people were leaving these big cities. They were looking elsewhere. So a lot of new homes were being sold. Uh, if we go back to a wider scope, you can see the big run up from 2008, big crash, and we've been in a little steady incline since. So what does this mean? Still early to tell. You can see we've had the ups and downs, um, but we're still in an upward trajectory for the most part. So as long as we hold that growth pattern, nothing to be worried about. So if we just zoom in again, we're still in that steady uptrend uh, in a medium long-term horizon. So nothing to be worried about there. All right, so this is that same number, but month over month growth. So you can see we had those negative prints, which were some of those Vs that you saw, but we had a big jump this past month. That's why we saw the recovery there. Just another way to look at the data. Other ones we were looking at, the Richmond Manufacturing and the Services Index. So again, in uh, the Richmond region, manufacturing activity, what's going on? We had uh, increases throughout the year. We had a decline in the past few months, but we got a little rebound. How does that look in the longer coat, the longer sphere of time? We have um, overall pretty good, 
pretty good activity going on. Slight decrease. We'll see if we get this bounce back if it holds, which would be encouraging. And then we have the services index as well. So we have manufacturing, we have services. You can see again, it looks like we peaked. You can see this might be more of a services thing, but the economy as a whole did peak in late April into May, beginning of June. We saw that peak and then we've had a decline since, a little bit of a rebound. Will that hold? We don't know. Last thing I want to talk about here is the Dallas survey. We have the Dallas Fed services index. So you can see this is almost the same pattern, right? You have activity in that region peaking in April, May. We've had a decline since and a little bit of a rebound. So will this hold? We hope so, right? We want more activity. So that is it for Tuesday. We're going to go check out Wednesday now. Wednesday, we have uh, the trade balance for the previous month. We have wholesale inventories, what companies are stocking their shelves with, at what rate, and then durable goods. These are durable goods is more of like a heavy equipment type order, right? That's what we're kind of looking at here. So the previous trade balance, we had a $96.25 billion deficit. And that was from the previous month of an $88 billion. So we have an increasing trade deficit, right? Wholesale inventories. So this has been high because these companies have been trying to restock their shelves as much as they can because consumers have been buying so much. So that's a healthy sign. Here we have durable goods orders that was down four tenths of a percent in September from the previous 1.3. It's hard to look at this in a month and take anything from it because it's very volatile. So we're going to look at the context here and see what we've got. So this is the trade deficit, right? You can see we're at a steady increase in the trade deficit, which is not what we want to see. And if we actually go back a little bit, we're almost at a record here. I think we might be at a record. I think that's the case. We're seeing record trade deficits over the historical trend here. So. This is not good news. A lot of this is because our consumer is strong and we're buying a lot of things from these other countries, right? We want a lot of imports and we're not exporting as much, right? A lot of this is due to the supply chain shortage that we're seeing. So our export ability is hampered, but our import is being expedited because we have a lot of demand on the consumer end. So that's where that ties into. Next thing is a wholesale inventory for the month over month. See, we've been hovering at about 1% growth every month, which is a healthy number. If we go back to a larger one, you can see we're kind of in a, in a higher trend here compared to the baseline. We're at about five tenths of a percent and we've been averaging eight tenths, nine tenths, almost a percent. So you can see all these, these companies are trying to, trying to keep up with the demand that they're seeing on the other end. Last thing we have the durable goods orders. You can see we had a negative print there, but it doesn't really mean much because we've been seeing a lot of orders being put in from these from these companies for durable goods. So if we go a little bit out, let's see if we can get some context here. We've been seeing actually some really steady growth, which is healthy. Um, you can see there's been a lot of waviness in the past decade, but if we go back in a shorter period, right, we've only had two negative months in the past year, which is quite impressive. We'll see if that holds up. All right, so the next day we have is Thursday. And Thursday, as you guys might know by now, every week we get an initial jobless claims update. We have a continuing jobless claims update. We've got some other things here as well. So again, initial claims are at 281,000, which is down from the previous 291. So that's good, right? Less people applying for unemployment. Continuing jobless claims, people that are still on the unemployment rolls dipped down to 2,243,000. That is down from the previous 2.48 million. So we're seeing people coming off these unemployment rolls, which is healthy. Third, we saw GDP growth rate come in at 2% for the third quarter. So this was a big disappointment. Um, coming out of 2020, we thought we would have an enormous year, maybe 5-6% for the year. And the first two quarters, we did see that, right? We saw about 6 6.5%. But the third quarter dropping to 2% was a big disappointment. Fourth quarter, we're probably not going to get near that 6% clip. Hopefully, we get a little bit of a rebound. But nevertheless, the entire year is looking at three to 4% instead of that five to 6% potential we have. So that was unfortunate. Um, we also got pending home sales. So that ties into kind of earlier with new, but we've got a year over year update on that. And then like those other surveys, what the Kansas region was looking like. So let's go check those contacts out. We have the initial jobless claims, like we said, is a new low for post COVID, which is really good news. Um, it's hard to show the contacts outside of the past year because it just screwed up with how many people were applying during COVID and really just, you can't really make out what happened prior. But we're at a post COVID low. That's all you really need to know. 
Again, continuing claims, we are also at a post-COVID low, which is good. We're seeing a lot of people leave the unemployment rolls. However, we're not seeing that really enter into the job market. So just a lot of savings at a lot of that government stimulus that is still hanging over. How long will that last? We don't know. We're kind of getting towards the tail end of that. Again, we're going to talk about the GDP here. So you can see we're at 6%, 6.5% the first half of the year, and then we're down to 2%. If we get another 2% clip, we'll be down average to about 12, 16, 18. We'll be at four and a quarter, which is definitely below the five to six that we wanted. So it makes a big, big difference. So that's unfortunate, but you know, a lot of different things to blame for that. We've also got pending home sales. Uh, we have month over month and year over year, but what I really want to look at is a year over year number. You can see we're um, starting to cool off a little bit. So pending home sales is a leading indicator of what home sales will be going forward. So we're seeing a little bit of a cool down, which is good news. We don't want too much um, activity happening in terms of inflation driven um, expenses. So it's good to have a little bit of a cool down. Last one we have is the Kansas Composite Index. We're at a 31, which is a post-COVID tie for most activity. So that's good, right? The Kansas region, um, Composite is basically taking services and manufacturing and tying them together into one specific index. So if we go back on some context here, we're probably in the averaging, you know, for the past decade or so, all all-time highs, which is really good news. Even if we're going really far back, you can see that this is a really good time for that industry or in that region. So hopefully that keeps up. That is another driver of economic activity. Lastly, we have Friday and Friday was a little bit lighter. So there's just a couple things on that one. We have personal income, personal spending and a Chicago PMI. So personal income, you know, what the average consumer is receiving an income month over month, what they're spending month over month. And the Chicago PMI is just another manufacturing index of that region. So personal income at negative 1%. So we're seeing a decline in income compared to a previous little bit of spike, 0.2%. Personal spending was at a 0.6% clip from the previous 1%. So like we're seeing, the consumer is very strong compared to the, um, the business side, which is seeing a lot of stagnation on the supply chain side. So... There's a lot of demand out there, but they're not able to meet it. Um, we can actually take a look at the context here. All right, we have personal income month over month. You can see we had a lot of stimulus, right, from the COVID bills, but now we're seeing that kind of fade and now we're kind of flatline. And if you look at a longer term chart, it's hard because COVID's really messed up a lot of these graphs, but you can see where we've had a lot of growth, about one to 2% is what you want to see every month. And we're let's say if we get rid of this COVID stuff, we're at, right, we're kind of flat, which is not what we want to see. If we go to spending, however, you can see that spending has still been somewhat strong for the most part. You can see, of course, a lot of that income was being spent, but we're still seeing spending here with income coming down. So what does that mean, right? You can put two and two together. Go to some context here. You can see spending is also around 1% or so, so it should match, right? If your income's going up 5%, your spending would probably match that, those cases. So that's what we're seeing here. So spending, though, in recent months has been a little stronger. So that's just an interesting take. Last thing we're going to look at is the Chicago PMI, which was a surprise to the upside, which was really good. Like we said, we peaked in late spring, early summer, had a little bit of a decline, but a little bounce back, which is what we want to see. We go back a little bit we're still at a at a relatively higher period than we were pre-covid so we want to keep that and you can see even going to the, since the early 19 excuse me the late 1980s that's kind of the last peak we were at here so we want to see this activity continue these would be a lot higher if we didn't have the supply chain issue if there weren't other threats and regulations or higher taxes we'd probably be at a reaching the potential that we had but can't go back in time. So that is really it for the economic calendar. It was a really busy week. We've got the next week coming up. You can see Monday starting, but a lot of data coming out. Um, this can seem very boring and dry, but I think it's good for people to know what's going on and to be educated on what the underlying economy is doing. That's all this is about. So from there, we're going to look at some headlines, right? So let me go back to my 
Um, some headlines I want to go over with you guys. We have Q3 earnings season still continuing. A lot of companies reporting Amazon, Apple, uh, Biden social spending plan progress, what that's been looking like. We have, again, supply chain issues, labor shortages. Those are all the same, actually, from last week. And inflation, also the same, because that's kind of what's been in the news, right, in terms of the economy and finance. And then interesting headlines. We have the Fed meeting coming up this coming week. We're going to see if they're going to stop with their QE and they're going to taper those purchases. We'll see how that is. So let's see these some of these headlines for you. I'll bring them up for you guys. This is, I typically just go to CNBC's page and I'll go to what their earnings page is. And you can see Exxon posting highest quarterly profit in years, revenue disappoints. Chevron reporting highest free cash flow on record. So this was oil's doing very well, right? In terms of well means higher prices. So these companies like that because their margins fatten and they can make more on their bottom line. You can see some other things too. Amazon badly misses, giving disappointing guidance. This is all relative, right? So Apple and Amazon, you can see here, they miss expectations, but they're still crushing it all in all, right? They're making a lot of money, but compared to what people were expecting, they didn't do so well, so the stock acts accordingly. What really matters is what they did, not how they did relative to what Wall Street thinks. Um, just some thoughts there. Also, Starbucks, a um, little short. So what we're seeing here is more from what they've done in the past quarter. It's a lot of what they're saying going forward. So Apple's been talking about the supply shortage, billions of dollars of lost revenue because they can't meet the demand out there. So really just listening to these calls and seeing what they're saying about the guidance going forward has been more important than what's actually happened in the previous quarter because that's all behind us, right? It's good to know how it was back then, but what's going in the next few months is what they've been listening to. Um, from there, we have um, his social, Biden's social spending framework. Um, he's trying to pass two separate bills. One of them is a bipartisan infrastructure bill, about $1.2 trillion or so. And we have his other social spending framework of $1.75 trillion. Um, like I said previously, this probably most likely will pass both of them. So we're expecting a lot of short and medium term stimulus in the economy. Um, the infrastructure bill will be more of that. This social spending framework of the Build Back Better, right? That's going to be a lot of tax increases. So you're going to see a lot of government spending, but you're going to see a lot of pullback in the private sector due to lost... Um, lost money in the economy not being circulated anymore. Because if you had the money buying things, now it's going to the government that's not being recirculated in the economy. Uh, that is less economic activity happening. So you've got a little uh, battle here between those two um, factors. We're going to see a mini short-term boom probably here with a lot of this, exp this spending. But uh, in the medium and long term, this uh, it's got a lot of permanent things that aren't looking too good. So, you know, depending on what side of the aisle you want. But well, what, what really matters here is it's probably going to pass. So be expecting more spending, more economic activity in the short term, and then get ready for more tax hikes as well. That's summarizing what this is. Um, again, on the supply chain, this article is, I mean, it's really irrelevant. What matters is we have goods that need to get where they need to go, and they're not getting there. So these leaders are just giving out statements, whatever they're doing. What really matters is... We're in a supply chain shortage, and this is not really going to go anywhere anytime soon. So we're going to see our potential not being reached on the supply side for quite some time. Um, well, how do we resolve this? It's probably just going to be time. It's probably just going to be time. So how much time? We don't really know. Um, inflation again. We're still at a 30-year high. Um, you're seeing this everywhere. It's actually crazy. I mean, if you just go to... Uh, restaurant, fast food, if you go to any department store, if you go to grocery store, you're really seeing this, which is uh, we haven't seen in 20, 30 years. Practically, we've been since the late 80s or early 80s, late 70s, steady decline. And now we're seeing an incline in, in these prices or in the rate of change of these prices. Inflation has been here for a while, but it's been controlled. So to see it increasing faster in the same amount of, prior, same amount of time has been quite concerning. So... What do you really do to combat this? You just hope that your income is increasing at the same rate, or at least your purchasing power is not decreasing from this inflation. Um, that kind of ties into the next thing here about the Fed meeting coming up. So the Fed's 
got two mandates by Congress. It's to maximize employment and steady prices. Steady prices ties into inflation. So they're supposed to be keeping inflation in check. Their, their goal is 2% inflation over the long term. So we've had below 2% for quite a while. So they seem to want to let this extended inflation ride out a little bit. Um, what the Fed has... The Fed has a lot of tools to control this, so they can change interest rates. So if they increase interest rates, that's going to lessen economic activity, which would theoretically lessen inflation. They also have quantitative easing and tightening. So if the QE is buying bonds, right, they're giving money for these bonds into the market. So that is increasing the money supply, which increases activity, which would increase inflation. And QT, quantitative tightening, is when they're selling it, so they're actually reducing the money supply in the economy, which would reduce inflation. So this meeting coming up is, are they tapering or starting the process of stopping QE? When are they starting and how fast will it go? And we're also going to learn a little bit about the rate hikes in next year and following, when that's going to start and at what pace. That's what we're going to find out. So in the next video, we'll be talking about that and we'll see what their plans are to tackle inflation that's still unknown at this point in terms of specifics. So those are most of the headlines I have for you guys. Lastly, I just want to wrap up on the market quick for you guys, give you guys a, a wrap up for the previous week, how it did. All right, so the S&P on Friday was up 0.19%, um, a weekly change of 1.22% and a year to date change of 24.5%. So we're getting new records here, right? A few weeks ago, we were in a little correction, you could say it was down 5 6%, and now we're rebounding back to all-time highs. They're probably looking at a lot of the spending and how the tax hikes aren't as bad as they were initially anticipating, right? We had unrealized capital gains taxes, a lot of things that were not looking good. We're still getting tax hikes, tax hikes in this bill, but it's not to the extent that the market was thinking, so they're a little happy about that. Uh, again, we have the Dow 30, was up 0.25% in the day, up 0.28% for the week, and up 18.5% for the year. Lastly, the NASDAQ was up 0.33% for the day, 2.5% about for the week, and 22% for the year. So the S&P has been charging ahead with this year, and it looks like they're still number one compared to the other two indexes here. So we'll see if that continues. It's actually healthy that they're outperforming tech for the NASDAQ 100, because tech always outperforms in most cases. So we're seeing a little bit of a rebalance here, which is what we want to see. So lastly, that's all I have for you guys. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Please follow us on all of our social media accounts. If you have any questions, be sure to leave comments or email us, and we will get back to you with any concerns you have. Um, give us a like on this, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys for the next video next week. Sounds good. Thanks.